Like, if you give a message, obviously because of current, what's happening in society, etc. If you were to give a message about Islam for any non-Muslims out there or people who are interested in Islam, what message would you give to them? Okay, so, I mean, it, it, it's really interesting how and why people become Muslim in the first place. And also, talking about a message, you know, I, I think it's I think it's important that a person there's a guy who's a YouTuber, his name is I think his name is Jay Palfrey. Yeah, I think so. The the Reba brother. Yeah, he, he, he became a Muslim recently, but was studying Islam for like a year or something before he became a Muslim and he was very, very he he, he wanted everything straight in his head before he did it. Which is a good way of, of doing it to be fair. Um, he didn't want to jump in, he wanted to make sure, he's obviously a very methodical person, got a lot of respect for people who are like that. And, and you think to yourself, you know, what, what is it that brings a person into something? So there's that, you know, um, Abdullah Quilliam. Okay, well there's a guy called Abdullah Quilliam and he became a Muslim. The first Muslim of this country. A bit of a claim, but yeah, okay. you, you, we can we can say. It. Or, I'll tell you what, the first, redeem, the, redeem myself. Here. The first, we'll call him the first convert okay. in this really. I mean, we don't know because who will ever know? You know, you were saying you were saying Bolt's the fastest man on <laughs> earth, but is it? I bet there's somebody else on earth who's faster. So, and yeah, so he became Muslim in like I don't know, 1877 or something like that. Now, and he did it because it just. He, he was in Morocco and the, you know, he's obviously seen something there which has triggered something for him. And he's accepted that deen, culture, whatever, and he's, and he's, and these are very well off people. He was a solicitor or something. He was very wealthy and he came from a wealthy family. So it's not like, because a lot of people are like, oh, well, it's, it's poor deadbeats that, that, change the religion because I've got nowhere else to go. No, he was a very, very wealthy person. And he came and he opened up a, a um, I'm, I'm off, I will get back to the question you actually asked. Okay, okay, this is... Um, and he came, you know, and, and opened up a, a masjid in, in Liverpool, of all places. There was Muslims in Liverpool and he, um, he started spreading the word. Now, some people say that because of him, he even set up, now check this out. Obviously, back then, there was an extreme poverty. It's a bit like now, but even poor people aren't that poor. They're just in debt. Whereas before, it was extreme poverty, but other people were extremely rich. Those people who couldn't um, look after their own children would give their children... He opened up like a, a centre for people to give their children to him because they couldn't do it. They couldn't even they couldn't afford it and stuff like that. He, but, he, but he could. He got given um, money from the Middle East as well for all this sort of stuff. Don't forget, this is st we're still in the Ottoman Empire at this point. Okay. So um, he, he knew, he met all these people and, and that, that's the, I, I don't know, the, the leader at the time, the... the, the, the the Khalifa, I think it was Abdul Hamid the second or something like that, who actually dubbed him Sheikh on Islam of the of, of Britain, <laughs> which is quite a title. But the point is, he opened up a, um, a, a like a nursery or like a a place to for people to give their children, non-Muslims, give their children to him, so that on the condition that they're happy for them to be brought up as Muslims. Oh. Now, that's in the 19th century, in Liverpool. Non-Muslims say, I mean, most of it will probably be because of desperation, but the point is, is that it's, it's amazing how, and, and he came out with a few publications, and this is a, another thing that we, you know, miss out on, I think. Uh, I'm sure it's happening elsewhere in Britain, but he used to, he had two publications. One of them, uh, the, called the Crescent, which I've read that he, every week he used to come, he used to, you know, he used to come out. He was un unapologetically Muslim. 
And he used to write, he did, did some of the stuff that he used to write in there was it's awesome. And he used to say, look, this is who we are and just deal with it, you know, basically. But there was a lot of intrigue into, um, into Islam. Now, obviously, don't forget, this is, this is a, a time where there was a lot of dealings between the UK and the Middle East, India, Pakistan, Britain owned half of it. So there was still, there was a lot of interaction, a lot of crossover. So it's not like nobody knew about Islam. You know, it was very well, um, there was a lot of interaction. But there was a lot of resentment, of course. People didn't like that culture. I mean, he had trouble himself um, and he, you know, as soon as he left, because he, he established the first masjid, which is still there. You can actually still go this, you can still go there, you can still pray there. I think they're looking to restore it all. Um, I think they're looking for, um, I think there's a there's a foundation that took it over. I'm not quite sure, but I think they're looking for donations to uh, to restore it. I don't know if they were, how far they got ahead with it. But the, the masjid is still there, you can still visit it. Um, and I, I just find it really interesting that at that time, the how he used to speak, how he used to, and I, I some people say that up to bec just because of him, five or six hundred Mus uh, people became Muslims, wow. and we're not talking run of the mill people. We're talking people of pre prestige. We're talking people middle class, um, even including. And I saw this. I saw a story of some um, descendant of a guy called. Robert, Robert Stanley, I'm sure his name was Robert Stanley. Um, and he was a, he was the mayor of Staley Bridge um, for a period of time. And then afterwards, and he became, he became a Muslim, became good friends with this uh, Abdullah William. Um, so these were, you know, these were well-to-do middle-class people. Well, that journey, well, what, what, the, the point I'm making and why it triggered when, when you asked that question is, is that, this dean is open to everyone of all different kinds and, and um, levels. And what, what you find is um, there's a lot of people who will walk to the door of Islam but never open it. And the reason why they never, or even somebody will open it for them but they'll never walk through. And one of the reasons is because so much hesitation about Will I be accepted for who for who I am? So do I have to change? That's the first thing, which is what I said before. Do I have to change? I don't want to change, and you shouldn't have to change. Um, and 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 the beauty of this dean is that it accepts you for who you are, in terms of culture, language. You know, people get caught up about Arabic and and, and things like that because the Quran is in Arabic. And that is not a condition to become a Muslim and neither should it be a condition. You know, we, we are here on this earth and, it's, you know, I'm going to come out with, um, what do you call it now, um, cliches. But we are, we are, we, we're, on a, we're on a journey, everybody's on a journey. And, and, and some people, they fall by the wayside in that journey and they lose their way.